Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Keith, welcome to my home. And today we're gonna to take a tour of my studio. Something you guys have been asking about for a while, so let's go check it out. If that's on, it means don't come down. This is where we descend. That was fucking stupid. So this is my lair. This area, I have a fridge, a microwave, got some Dan Seagrave prints, because death metal, gotta have Dan Seagrave prints. This little device keeps the dust down in here because it gets really, really dusty with all the equipment. This Keurig machine keeps me alive. Nothing too exciting in here, I just have extra tripods. I was thinking about turning it into a vocal booth. Goes back underneath the stairs, Harry Potter style. This is one of those Kid Crusher Ikea dressers, no doubt. A full bathroom. This is another storage closet here. Some wireless gear. I have some Ernie Ball bass strings, extra microphones, amp foot switches, PI boxes. I normally keep my guitar strings and my pedals in here, but we have them out because we're about to do some fun projects. This is the guest bedroom. This is where people stay when they come to work here. I can deflate this amazing air mattress and put it off in the corner, wheel a cabinet in here, mic it up get as loud as I want. Um, I have a Randall isolation cabinet in the corner here. That's wired into the other room, so when I'm sitting at my desk, I can crank up an amp, listen to it through the monitors, and you don't hear the actual cabinet itself. I have uh, some kind of overflow guitars. Some of them aren't even actual guitars, like this, for example, is a body blank, like a prototype from when we were designing the Mark III. I probably don't have time to go through every single guitar here because I feel like if we spent even 20 seconds on each one, we'd be here forever. So I'll just show you a couple of the choice ones in here. This is a Mark III standard. This is black with the uh, baked maple neck. Really cool guitar. This is like the entry level Mark III. So it's a really good bang for the buck guitar. Some of these are old prototypes, uh, like this for example is a very early Mark I prototype. Got a Kiesel Vader here with a Rev 740. That's just like a really cool little bedroom setup. You know, if people come here and it's late at night and they have an idea or something, they can just plug into that and play bedroom levels. I got another Child Crusher. Software books. Gotta have the Witcher series, of course. A couple preamps. Guitar cases. The closet behind you there, that's just all luggage and junk. Alright, so moving into the lounge area. Oh, don't forget to get the robot back in. He's the real MVP, dude. He's probably always got about an ounce of weed on him at all times. A couple couches here, people can hang out, take a break, watch some Netflix. I come down here to take a nap a lot because it's just, it's quiet, dead silent down here when there's nothing going. and. It's the best spot in the house to sleep. Here's some of my pedals. Um, we won't go through all these. Leon here behind the camera and uh, my buddy Kyle, we're gonna put together a pedal board just for fun, just for something to do. We'll get some video of that. So you guys will see all these. These are yours, Leon. Hell yeah. Yeah, so right here we have a Bogner Ubershaw, which I don't think Leon's gonna get back. I think I pretty <laughs> much own it now. This angle power ball, this thing is really easy to get a good tone out of, I think. It's, it's kind of bright, but like, in the best possible way. The diesel for me is a little more tricky. Like it definitely needs an EQ in the loop to get the most out of it. Like it's a great sounding amp as is, but because the mid-range is really scooped out on it. Right, wouldn't you say, Leon? Absolutely. Yeah. This is the pedal train pedal board that we're gonna be putting together. And Lone Wolf Audio pedals, Left Hand Wrath. This here is Eleanor Rigsby. This is my kind of Swiss Army knife rig. I can do clinics, I can do live performances, I can do mobile recording, I can hook my laptop up to it, control patch changes via MIDI for live performances. Been around the globe a few times with this guy and it's held up very nicely. This is my camera cart and it just holds my extra lenses, batteries, cameras. So here's one of my guitar boats. I have some Mark 1s, Mark 2s. So some of these guitars aren't actual production model guitars, they're prototypes. And I end up keeping the prototypes a lot of times when we design these, so that's why I have so many of the same ones. These ones are getting kind of hard to find. Oh yeah, so this thing, this gentleman named Casey from No Shadows Optics, he took my Predator inlay idea and did fiber optic inlays with it. That has got to be the coolest inlay on earth. Should we show your 
Your fly rig? This is Leon's fly rig. Um, he obviously knows way more about it than I do, but it's based around this blue guitar preamp, which sounds surprisingly awesome. That thing shocked me. I didn't expect that it would do like extreme metal tones, but it rips. Right, Leon? Yeah. And then uh, he's got a, a little dual ABY box, right? Yep. Yep. And then... Uh, the other two are the uh, MWK Chrysogrim, which is like a two screamer and a distortion pedal built into one. And the one in the middle is the Lonely Ghost, which is a reverb, delay, and boost all in one, like basically everything you need to play a solo. And what this thing weighs what, like maybe 15 pounds? Yeah. 20 pounds, maybe? I mean, no. you could throw that in any overhead, fly anywhere with it, throw it in the passenger seat of your car, like whatever, and that's everything you need to play a show right there. So we were tracking vocals for a project here a couple days ago. We still have everything set up. Uh, usually the studio is a little bit better kept than this, but we've been working in here, so might as well show you what it's like when we're actually doing things. Here we just have a really simple setup for vocals. It's an SM7B. And we have that hooked up to this cloud filter, which is a decibel cloud booster. Cloud lifter? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I have to sound like I know what the f I'm <laughs> I don't even know what this f***ing thing is. We have this mic hooked up to a cloud lifter, which is like a decibel booster, because the SM7B is kind of a quiet mic, like you really got to push it. And when we go to track the vocals, we're going to move this over here in front of these panels, so we have a nice isolated little area for vocals. So I have a Canon M50 multi-camera set up. Basically the way I have this working is everything's wall powered. All my lighting is fixed and, and in a specific spot. So it stays pretty stationary. I can flip it on anytime I want to record up to seven different angles in the studio and uh, be able to just capture life happening in here. Check out some of these amps. This is one of my favorite rigs. This is a Rev generator 100P. It's a really hard amp to describe unless you're familiar with its older brother, the Generator 120. Basically what this is, is a two-channel version of this amp that features the purple channel, which is kind of like what put Rev on the map for their modern high gain. And this amp's built around that channel, so it sounds really good. Below that, I have my Pesu 212 cabinet. I actually don't know what speakers are in it at the moment because I've swapped them out so many times, I can't remember. My favorite cab ever though, it's got the Conquering Dystopia album artwork on it, which is pretty cool. This is the first Rev amp that I got and might actually still be my favorite one. That's a Rev Generator 120 Mark I. If you liked the tone on the first Alluvial album, it's basically based around this amp's tone. Below that, I have a Framus 412 cabinet. Uh, that's got greenbacks in it. It's really cool sounding cabinet, actually. Let's show them your bass. <laughs> this is Leon's uh, super sick Ernie Ball Music Man. Awesome bass. We've been using it here. He bought it, and I think the day he got it, he brought it over, and it's been over here ever since. It's mine now. This is my old trusty 1994 5150 SIG. I've had it a really long time, done a lot of work with it. This is a little bit different than a standard 5150. It has a KT88 6L6 hybrid tube kit in it and a bias mod. It's uh, probably still one of my favorite amps of all time. You put a tube screamer in front of that and have it set to those settings and that's my tone. Below that, I have a PV Invective 412 cabinet. These are really cool cabinets because they have uh, they have two vintage 30s and two creambacks in them, so it's kind of like a blended cabinet sound. This is a Quilter Aviator 210. This amp takes pedals really well. It's just a really neutral sounding, clean amp. This was used on the Conquering Dystopia album for all the clean guitars. So this is my Alien Evolution. Uh, this is a really cool amp. I think it's the only one of these in the United States. They're a small Brazilian amp builder. It's probably my most tame sounding amp. Uh, I love this thing for like mid-gain tones. If you want to push it into metal territory, you got to really hit it with a boost pretty hard. Below that, I have a PV Invective 120. This amp, I think, has probably the most comprehensive feature set of any amp I've seen. Basically what this amp is, is a 6505 with a boost, a gate, an awesome effects loop, storable presets, and effects loop power. It's got every feature you would need to basically build an entire rig around this with pedals and everything. I need to figure out a way to get a little bit more low end out of it without it getting muddy or losing clarity. 
And then below that I have the Invective 212 cab. When you use this whole setup and you have the six speakers in the Invective, it sounds insane. It's way too much for a room this size, but it's uh, pretty fun. And this little guy, oh man, what can you say about the PRS Archon 6L6? It's in my top five favorite amps. Doesn't need a boost. It's got tons of gain, but it's this really, really complex and harmonically rich saturation. It's just such a great sounding amp. It just lacks features that a lot of other amps have, but I don't even care. You get this primitive EQ section, you plug it in, you plug in your guitar, and you just rip. You just have this glorious tone right out of the box. You should take this one home, Leon, and give yeah. it a try. This is my Driftwood Purple Nightmare. This is a German-built boutique amp. The components in this thing are like cork sniffer quality. I was surprised by this when I first got it because it had some features on it that I hadn't seen on other amps before. It has a built-in tube screamer circuit, like an 808 circuit. It has a noise gate that's in the back, and it also has pedal power. Other amps stole the idea. <laughs> all right, do I look all cramped and weird in this corner like this? Gollum over it's here. Switches. <laughs> <laughs> so this combo here, this Rev Generator 120 combo, basically one of my favorite amp rig that I have overall. This is the Mark II version of the generator, and it's similar to the Mark I that I have over there, but they changed around some circuits and basically tailored the low end a little bit more. It's just a really big sounding amp. You have all the tone shaping options you could possibly want, so it's really versatile. You could get just about any tone out of it from clean, mid gain, high gain, all the way into extreme death metal territory very easily. And this cabinet sounds amazing. All right, so I have two guitar boats on each side of my desk. I have my bass guitar, six strings, seven strings. Uh, we'll, we'll check out just a few of them. Uh, like for example, this is a really good studio workhorse guitar for me. Original Mark I with an Evertune on it. Fishman Moderns. This thing has been beat on and used on all kinds of stuff, and it's always slightly out of tune. <laughs> Drug lord's gonna come and fucking chop me up. <laughs> this is my main bass guitar. It's a Schecter. Has the new Fishman pickups in it. Sounds awesome. This is Leon's Horizon E2. Looks like he's got Mick Thompson blackouts, yeah? Yep. Yeah. On the other side of the desk, we have my other guitar boat. This is my main guitar that I use on all kinds of things. I use this for recording, I use it for clinics, for tours, anything I can. This is one of my favorite guitars of all time and it sits right next to me at my desk at all times. Okay, so over here, this is the very first Mark III guitar. John Godessi and I built this in the Schecter USA Custom Shop. And so this ultimately was the blueprint for the Mark III series. This is a Mark III Hybrid in Telesto Gray. Great workhorse guitars. All right, so this is where all the fun happens. It's my main workstation area. The desk itself is an Omni Rax Force 36 model. No complaints about it. It's got lots of rack space on all sides. So for my monitoring setup, I have Genelec 8351As as my mains. I just got those recently to replace some Event Opal monitors and no regrets. Those things are amazing. They're tuned to the room. It'll adjust the monitors based on your actual space. So it takes a lot of the guesswork out of whether or not your room is tuned properly. I have a lot of sound treatment in this room but it just gives it that extra edge and really they have a ton of clarity. And my B set are Dyn Audio BM5A. They're a little squishy sounding, they're a little cloudy, but I really love those for just listening to music. Below that I have a Furman power conditioner. This is my Two Notes Torpedo Studio, which is a digital load box IR loader. You can plug any of these amps into it, run that into your interface and record without a cabinet. It's always good to have a consumer grade speaker somewhere in your workstation area because most people are gonna end up listening to your mixes on something like this. Over here I have two battery backup systems. Basically, if I get a power outage, which I tend to get here, I have about nine minutes to shut down the workstation and then my Wi-Fi and everything else will continue to run for at least 100 minutes. Still watch Netflix on my phone. On this side, I have a Peterson strobe tuner. My DI signal runs through that and I can check my tuning on any instrument plugged into the system. My recording interface is a Universal Audio Apollo. This is an older Firewire version that has been upgraded with the Thunderbolt 3 card. 
Over here I have a satellite which basically doubles the amount of DSP that the Apollo has. On the right hand side I have a Furman power conditioner. I have my main Kemper. This is my laptop that I use with my live rig uh, to change MIDI patch commands but also I just use this for editing and day-to-day -day stuff. This is a 2019 Razorblade Stealth 4K model. I have some extra headphones here if we were tracking vocals. So down here I have a two notes torpedo reload which is essentially a DI box, reamp box, and a load box in one. Below that I have a second Kemper seems a little redundant to have two but we actually use them all the time uh, when people come over and we're writing or working we usually use them both down here i have a sure wireless system and you can use this for guitar but i use it for a wireless lav mic for doing videos below that i have a, another recording interface it's just sort of an extra one it's a zoom tac 8 Thunderbolt interface. Below that I have my backup in-ear monitor system that came out of my live rack. I just upgraded to all Shure stuff, all the new digital stuff. Below that I have a Relay G90 and that's just a guitar wireless. If I need to go wireless in here for some reason I'll just plug into that and walk around anywhere. And then I just have my Kemper Profiler remote. On the other side all I have is just some drawers that's just full of like guitar picks. You know I have extra in-ear monitors, extra GoPro cams iLock device, you know, stuff like that. So for my screens, I just have a matched pair of LG ultra wide screen monitors. They're great, no complaints, got tons of real estate on them. You know, last time I did a studio video, I just kind of did an overview of the computer, of the actual PC that runs everything. And people were kind of bummed about that because I, I just kind of skipped over the specs. Okay, I'm a nerd and I like to build computers in my spare time. There's several computers in this house that I've built. I build them for friends, I build them for other bands, other producers, but basically it's a lot of fun. It's like adult Legos and the specs on this machine are insane and pretty much future-proof at the moment and it'll run anything I need it to run. I built this about a year ago. It's an Intel-based machine, i9-9900K. It's got 64 gigs of RAM, all solid-state drives, M.2 drives. The video cards in this machine at the moment, I had a 2080 Ti in there, but right now I have two 1080 Ti's because I found that for rendering video, SLI is actually pretty sweet uh, in Adobe Premiere because it'll render one frame per card, so it renders really, really fast. It's about comparable to what the 2080 was, but I took that out and put it in my other workstation. I think we're gonna have to check that one out now too. So the DAW that I use is Persona Studio One Pro. It's just a really reliable, creative DAW. It's, it's, to me, it's kind of like a creator's DAW. It's meant for people who like to write music and it gives you a really kind of seamless workflow. I swear by it. Leon behind the camera here, it's also a Studio One user. Get on our level. All right, well, I should probably show you my other workstation because I spend just about as much time there as I do here. So let's run upstairs and take a look at that. So up here, this is kind of our chill hangout area, theater room. My beautiful wife, Crystal, is sitting here with our beautiful dogs. This is my other workstation, so I can be chilling with the family, watching Netflix. I can sit on this couch with my dogs, I can grab my lap keyboard, and I can edit a video. <laughs> Yourself, it's like you're on the video. <laughs> Zoom way. <laughs> computer is essentially a mirror of the one downstairs. It's an i9, 9900K. Uh, it has a water-cooled 2080 Ti in it, and it runs super smooth for video editing. So I just have it hooked up to this TV cart. I can hang out on the couch and get work done. And that's basically where my rig ends, is right here on the couch. So that was it. That's my home. That's my studio. Today's a holiday here in the States, so we're going to hang out, have a couple drinks. All right, Leah, let's head out, man. See you guys on the next one. Yay! Really working out.